The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to start out the show like we usually do, and that is we're going to take a look at the German DAX, um, and it is really showing some type of a bottom possibly in here, folks, much like we've seen here in the U.S. stock market. We're in the third day of the rally now, if in, this is in fact a rally, and it certainly looks like it is. But we have some major news breaking, folks. We have found out that the gentleman from the Washington Post who was murdered um, uh, in uh, Turkey, he actually went to that extreme, extreme, extreme left-wing school in Terre Haute, Indiana, Indiana State University, the product of our good friend Norman Winsky. And as I recall, they must have been pretty close to the same class. No, Norm would have been in the class of the 70s. So he's uh, he's about 15 years older than the guy. But <laughs> I, I really feel that's kind of kind of funny to have uh, in the middle of the uh, of in Indiana to have somebody going to school there. Anyway, that was from Wikipedia and our good friend Norm. But uh, I thought that is just a little tidbit uh, of in information. Uh, we've got uh, a lot of things happening. Of course, we, we did hold that bottom uh, from last Thursday. We were watching that. It's held so far. We've looked at several of these FANG stocks, and they've all had some really good indications that, you know, a, a severe, uh, let's not say severe, but a very important bottom had formed in some of these things. So we want to be able, <laughs> you're right, Mr. Bill, uh, is to uh, keep an eye on, you know, some of these things like, you know, Apple, extremely bullish. It made the 382 retracement of the uh, the June 25th low. We had all of them doing the same thing. It didn't make any difference whether it was uh, Netflix or whether it was Facebook, all of those we've looked. I don't want to spend a lot of time, you know, showing those charts again because you folks get tired of seeing that stuff, but we want to pay a little bit of attention to it. Now, one of the one of the things that is really happening presently is uh, what's going on with the British pound. I want to do two things here because we have this Brexit thing is going to be happening and we were fortunate enough uh, two years ago in June to catch that. And I'll, I'll show you why uh, in just a minute. And we'll see if uh, if that's the case. Norm is Norm is suggesting that he used to eat at my grandmother's restaurant in uh, Terre Haute. I, I'm not that's not a surprise because everybody ate there. It had the had the best food in town. Anyway, he uh, he was there during the time that Larry Bird played. I think he was a freshman when Larry Bird uh, was uh, you know there. So he might have been a basketball fan. Who knows? Anyway, let's take a look at this British pound on the daily basis. You see that we had a really nice uh, pattern on the bottom. We had a beautiful ABCD three drive bottom bottom down there at 126.70. We rallied up to the 133, which was an ABCD to the upside, which was exactly 78% of the high that we made in June. And then we came down, we made an ABCD with a 135 pattern. The one is being in August. The two was in the three was in September, and the five, of course, is where the objective of the short sale came in in uh, October the second. And now what we've done is we've gone up to this level here of the 132.30, that has been the 78% level. We've hit that one, two, three, and today is the fourth time that we've hit that objective. Now whether it gets through there or not, you know, remains to be seen. But if we take a look. Uh, just uh, just really look at this on a little bit longer time frame here. I, I want to. I just want to give it to you, uh, just to show it to you on a bigger time frame because it's got, it's got some things that I think are. Um, yep, that was 1979, boys and girls. It was. Uh, I actually. Uh, well, I, that's an old story about Terre Haute, Indiana. You guys don't need to hear that, but I. I. I well, I think you should hear it. I was. Uh, you know, being from Indiana, I loved basketball. I played basketball, and all my buddies 
you know, were basketball players. When Bird transferred from Indiana University to Terre Haute to play for Indiana State, you know, they said, oh, this guy's better than Oscar Robertson. And I laughed and I joked because, uh, you know, I played against Oscar Robertson in 1956 and they beat us by they beat us by 62 points in, an, in a 24 uh, minute game. We played eight minute quarters. Uh, anyway, that they were saying how good Bird was and everything and long, long story. But um, I don't even know if I should tell it. I probably, I don't think I'm going to. Anyway, it doesn't make any difference. We'll move on to something. And yeah, big Oscar Robertson. He was one of, he's one of the few, he averaged a triple double in two years during 1971 and 1972 when playing with the Milwaukee Bucks with uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Also, he was at Lou Alcindor at the time. He averaged a triple double, which is really amazing. But if you want to know how good Oscar Robertson is, if you ever talk to him, he always says that the greatest player that he ever played against was Bill Russell. And uh, if you ever, uh, uh, well, if they ever, if they ever, ever see that video, it, it's really amazing to see how how incredibly good Bill Russell was. It just uh, really amazing. Another interesting thing about Bill Russell, he's one of the few people who doesn't give autographs. Um, He's never given an autograph, not even to his, uh, not even to his daughter. No, Purdue is from. Uh, that's from. Uh, Purdue is in West Lafayette, and that's where. Um, that's where a couple other people went to school there. Anyway, let's move on and stop talking about basketball. Shut the front. Yeah, yeah. Bill Russell has 11 championship rings, Jim. Not many people know that. Um, and remember, when he played for the let's. I'm going to get. I'm going to get uh, thrown off the air here if I keep talking about basketball. But let's uh, something that I like to do. But we'll still move on to uh, something else. We've got a few things that we really need to talk about here with this British pound, and I want to do my best to try to get it up here to show you, uh, you know what it means. So just give me one second here. There's what I want to show. I want to show you here is the. Um, this is the pound versus the euro. Yep, he played for the San Francisco Dons. You're right. There's the. You'll notice this is that weekly chart. You'll you'll see where we were back in June. We were on the right shoulder of that um, of a, of that uh, head and shoulders pattern. Uh, the pound was trading at uh, 150. This is the pound versus the euro. It's one of the major cross rates. And from there, you see that we dropped, uh, you know, quite a bit. That was that was our biggest win uh, in the year for in the 24/7 service. That we shorted that right at 150, and uh, we covered it at one. Oh, I think we covered it way too early, <laughs> but they went down another 15 points to the low. But we took over uh, 30 handles out of it, which was a uh, which was our biggest move of the year, and it happened very, very quickly. Now they don't always uh, don't always work that way, but uh, that one actually did. We'll talk more about that uh, a little bit later because this is an important time for the pound because of the fact that all this stuff is going on over in the UK, and they want to be able to uh, you know see what's going on. As we look at the FTSE, if we take a look at the FTSE here, you'll notice it's trying to make a bottom also. So. A lot of these uh, things are beginning to look like they're trying to make bottoms. Who knows? 877-927-6648. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan its most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. 
Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance, David White's daily market letter, gives you trade recommendations based on David's proprietary power law vector indicator that put the odds of success overwhelmingly in your favor. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop price for each stock and option trade. David combines his years of trading experience along with his background in technology and computing to offer his subscribers his take on the markets on a daily basis. Every trading day by 9.30, David publishes his morning issue of the Path of Least Resistance, along with updates sent out throughout the week whenever there is new, actionable trading information. All new subscribers receive a 30-day, no-questions-asked, money-back guarantee. To sign up for David White's daily trading newsletter right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com, and you'll find the Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks, and I believe we have a caller today. Mr. Z from Philly is on the line. John, are you there? You sparked some memories when you were just speaking. <laughs> when I was a child, when I was not when I was a child, but when I was a kid, hmm. I lived in the uh, Milwaukee area, hmm. and I would go to sleep listening on AM radio, the Bucks games with the Big hmm. O, El Sindor, Dandridge, McLaughlin. I forget who the fifth key player was. So uh, that was quite a time for them then. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I I actually played against. Uh, uh, Oscar Robertson, when I was uh, at uh, Terre Haute Schulte, we played against Christmas Attics High School. When I was a freshman, he was a senior, and they beat us by 62 points in a in a 32-minute game. But, uh, oh, my gosh, it was uh, – it, of course, he went on to play at Cincinnati. Everybody thought he was going to play at Indiana University, but he went to Cincinnati to play. Anyway, John, what can I do for you, my friend? I posted a chart here that I think you might be interested in. It comes from the Elliott Way folks showing you that the – uh, you know, the oversold nature of the Treasury bond market. And, you know, we've been down eight weeks in a row, so who knows uh, whether that's going to be uh, something. What, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, uh, Larry, uh, thank you for that. I had a very specific question for you on the bonds, just uh, uh, for what it's worth. During this uh, bond futures contract decline since Labor Day, 145 down to 136, it's nine points or so, Mm -hmm. I captured a majority. I didn't capture all of that, but I, on the short side, captured a majority of that decline. And just uh, just between you and I and your audience, uh, I am speculating that lower lows are directly ahead so long as this bounce does not get back above roughly the 139 and three quarters area. And of course, if it gets above, then I'm just wrong. And I'll know that I'm wrong. But uh, barring that, and we bounced, and we went to 139, so we haven't gotten over it yet. So my question, very specifically, if we turn down right here from this 139 that was last week, uh, my question is, if we turn down and go to lower lows, can you show me what pesavento patterns, what FIB expansions you might be thinking of using to signal covering shorts at a profit, assuming that happens, please? Yeah, John, I'll post the weekly chart here for the bonds. I've, this is the one that we've been waiting for. 
uh, you know, it's been bearish for such a long time, but the ABCD on the big rally to, took almost eight months. That was from 2017 into those uh, the first nine months of the year. And um, that gives us a price target of 127. That's 10 handles from where we are right now. Uh, you'll notice that there's another ABCD pattern that is there that would come in around 131. That's assuming that we might get a little bit of a rally here because we're we're down eight weeks in a row, which in itself is a you know a pretty uh, negative thing. But the the chart is so bearish, John, that uh, you know it it really is. You know we're looking at higher interest rates. It doesn't make any difference what the Federal Reserve does. You know the market is you know telling them that they want to have higher interest rates. But I'm looking at 127 as a um, you know, potential larger target. The only thing that I'm concerned about here is the fact that we've been down eight weeks without much of a bounce. And, and you're right, we haven't bounced very much for the last five days. So that's telling you that the weakness is still in the market. But my original target would be between 131 and 127 on that long-term uh, bond contract. Gotcha. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Can I also ask you, you mentioned uh, the British pound versus the dollar. Yes. Uh, I'm wondering, uh, do you possibly have the uh, cross pair between the euro and the pound? And uh, if you do, what I'm wondering about is um, if, in fact, well, there you go on Tiger TV, the British pound euro weekly. And um, can you uh, just uh, tell us what you see uh, where this could conceivably rally to if the Brexit negotiations with the EU proceed in such a way that the British pound rallies vis-a-vis uh, -vis the euro. I, I'd appreciate your thoughts on that, please. Sure, John. If we look at this on a weekly basis, it's it's a little similar to what we saw on the uh, the British pound on the daily. If we can get it above 133 uh, on the pound, we can easily get it to uh, you know, back to the 78% of that whole range uh, from Brexit, and that would take it up to about the 142 level. But, you know, I, you know, there might be some a lot of emotionalism, but nothing like what happened, you know, with Brexit when it came out, because that was a, that was an outlier event. You know, the people in the UK, uh, the odds were, were nine to one that they were going to stay. And uh, when it happened, you know, it really, uh, well, as you can see what happened to the pound, because you were involved with that, too. But uh, it was a, you know, it was a total surprise. Those are the kind of things that when they happen, you know, it changes the economic thought. And it's been two years now, a little more than two years. Well, coming into two years, yeah, it's been more than two years. And uh, so anyway, those are the ones that, uh, you know, you have to, uh, uh, to put to hang your hat on. If this, if this turns out to be... A good thing for the UK, which I'm sure it would be. Either way, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, I think they'll probably get a little bit of a rally in here, but I believe they are going to leave. Um, the odds say that they are, but then again, you know that could be you know something different. I think the change here would be the fact that they would have another uh, another vote and then you know go back the other way. That that would really upset the apple cart and uh, cause so Larry, more consternation. Can I just, just to review, I'm looking in Tiger TV, and thanks for that, the weekly British pound versus euro chart, that's currently at, uh, you know, rounded up, 114. Uh, yes. If, for whatever reason, fundamentally, as a result of these negotiations and whatever that outcome is, but uh, it's at 114, uh, please repeat what you said. You could envision this rallying to where? Uh, up to uh, the 120. That, on that on that chart, it would be up to about the 134 level. I got you. Very good. Right. Um, very good. Uh, I'm uh, I'm actually speculating as we speak right now with a long position in British pound versus the euro. So um, we shall see. So uh, thanks for uh, giving me that uh, that uh, I can factor that into my thinking. I appreciate it. Not a problem. Listen, thanks for calling in, my friend. We really appreciate it. Anything else I can help you with? No, that's it. Uh, thanks again, Larry. All right. Mr. Z, you do a great job for TFNN. Keep up the good work, my friend. Okay, folks, we're going to uh, take a quick look here. we got the break coming up. The market's going to open sharply higher. looks like about 25 handles or so uh, in the S&P. Uh, the areas that we're looking for, of course, are around 2,800. Uh, 20, I believe the the number is uh, right around 2,800 in the S&P. That's about 27 handles from where we are right now. 
And uh, that would be a real interesting one, you know, to really take a look at. In fact, what I'm going to do right now is just to show you the action over the last, uh, this is just a, a four minute chart. You can see how crazy things are, but they're acting uh, just typical of what the markets usually do. We'll get this up here so you folks can take a look at it. And you'll see the swings that we had yesterday. Then we had the big sell off. It stopped right again at the uh, uh, right at the 61 percent retracement near the low of the days at 245. And we've rallied now uh, 30 some handles to the uptide. Very similar to what we did yesterday. So let's keep an eye on it. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're taking a look here at the uh, British pound chart going back over the last couple of years. You'll see back in June of uh, 2016 when they had the Brexit vote uh, we were making an ABCD pattern on the weekly basis. You saw that a little clearer when we did the pound uh, euro chart uh, because we're doing the pound versus the dollar on this one. What I wanted to point out 
to you is to show you a couple things. On the way down, you'll notice that we had uh, one ABCD pattern, a very weak one between May and August. And all we did was just barely make a 382 retracement. That was at 134. And from there, it went straight down 14 points to finally make its bottom at 121, which was a, a major bottom. Now, as you can see, after we rallied, we went up into um, April of last year when we hit 144. And then we came down to almost making the 78% level at 128. And now, and this is why I, I think it's so important to keep an eye on this, is that we are looking at a ABCD structure that is uh, during the time when they're you know talking about Brexit and the implementation of it, and that takes us to potentially 134, 135. That was that number that we were talking about with Mr. Z just a few minutes ago. So that's an interesting one to pay close attention to. We're trading at 130, we're roughly 132 and change right now. So there's always that possibility that we could be looking at that. That is a, a perfect ABCD. If you'll notice that the 61% retracement comes down uh, exactly you know where it's supposed to be and that's what you're supposed to be looking at now the next one that you want to uh, take a look at here is we'll get quickly and, and then I want to get on to something that I really think that uh, is important and that is the fact that uh, we, we want to talk a little bit but really trading is all about and that's about the psychology of the stuff and I I think that's something that is uh, you know really really important to uh, take a look at but I did want to go over the banking index one more time because we did hit that major bottom down here last week. Uh, we're having a pretty good rally here today, given the fact that we're having good uh, uh, earnings from uh, uh, Goldman Sachs and some of the others, and um, that's getting it to uh, you know much uh, much stronger levels. So we'll, we we do have a positive bias today in the market, which we expected, and then we'll we'll see where it goes you know from this level here. But we're opening sharply higher. Uh, much, much, much to be expected because we thought we were having some type of a pretty good bottom here. If you'll remember, uh, the one that we were watching, of course, being the IWM, you know, that was the one, uh, this was the one from when we made the lower low at the 0.61% uh, retracement of the exact low from February. I mean, my goodness, that was, you know, pretty much spot on. So we'll see what the what the rally is going to be here, but that's what we're watching, uh, you know, here early this morning, you know, to take a uh, take a look at this as we see. We're up about, oh, 25 handles or so uh, in the S&P, so we'll see, you know, what it can do, you know, from this level, and then we will move on to see what the next swing will be. Um, there's a little resistance, of course, at that 2780 level. That's going to be a little bit of a problem. Those are the previous day's highs. It can take that out and then move higher, but our original, our original goal that we're looking at here, if we're looking at the comparable, uh, like what we had in 1987, and let me just bring this up. I don't know if this is going to happen or not, boys and girls. I'm just saying that we're in a time frame where we could get something like this happen. And uh, you'll notice that um, during this time into October 2nd, that's when we had that Venus Uranus in 1987, the market rallied to a 61% retracement and then rolled over in between the you know, the 2nd of October and the 19th of October, the Dow lost 33%. That was a true crash because it took, uh, you know, two weeks to do it. You know, you don't get a crash for two days. If you're going to get a crash, you know, it's going to take, uh, you know, several weeks. This is what happened, you know, in uh, in 2000, uh, 1929. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that, you know, take a look at it. There's some factors there that, you know, we've been talking about for a long time that look very, very interesting. These long-term patterns that we hit in these markets, uh, you can't deny those. Those are very, very important, and uh, we want to just keep uh, keep a, clo a close eye on it, if nothing else. That's the that's the main thing, uh, you know, to keep to keep watching is what I'm seeing is, yes, the the uh, the gold is up into this area here. We made a higher high yesterday in silver, which was. Uh, uh, we, we almost made a double top up here at the 1490 level in silver. We still might, but the gold is at a very critical level. There's no question about it. It's setting right at that, and I, and we could easily go above the 36 level, uh, 1236, but it's going to be looking at a price objective of 1240 uh, just right above that, so it could very easily do that, but it's acting relatively bullish 
you know, there's no question about it. You know, we thought that uh, we were going to be higher, and we certainly are. We've gotten up to that 1236. You'll see right above that, you'll see the 1.27 extension of this is at 1242. That's only six or seven dollars from where we are right now. So there's always that possibility that we could make that without uh, without any trouble at all. We've had some a question about the grain markets. Folks, if you remember about three or four weeks ago when we were making these major bottoms in these grains, I sent out a special report on that uh, saying you that there was uh, there was something in these tariffs that didn't look right, and that was the fact that these patterns that we were seeing in all of these grains were indicative of a major bottom, much like we saw in sugar, much like we saw, saw in coffee. And that brings us to a sore subject. Uh, I had a recommendation to buy the coffee down there at 96. It's now trading at 119. And I suggested everybody getting out of it at 114. And that was 19 handles ha uh, higher. And then I get a nice email saying, how could I be so silly? That wasn't the word they used. But how could I be so silly to get out of it 114 when it was going straight up? And the answer to that was, it was up like 10 days in a row. And I believe in statistics, and one of the statistics I look at are outlier events. And if you get a market that's up or down eight days in a row, the odds of it getting ready to turn are very, very high in the neighborhood of about 85%. I, and believe me, you know, one of the things we're going to talk about in just a few minutes here when we come up to the next break is these fears that you have about leaving money on the table and stuff like that. Folks, you're always going to lose, leave money on the table unless you get the exact low or the high tick. And that just doesn't happen in the real life. That is just not going to happen. So you've got to uh, you got to keep that in mind that that's uh, that's what you have to realize when you're dealing with some of these things. It's uh, it's really important that uh, you know you're you're not going to have uh, something like that uh, occur. So it's just going to be extremely unusual for you to get the high or low tick. I ha I happen happen occasionally, but you know not very often. Usually my highs ticks and my my low ticks are where I get stopped out at. You know, so those are just some of the things that you got to be worried about, you know, when you're doing, uh, when you're watching these things. So keep in mind that those are, you know, you're never going to get the high tick. You're never going to get the low tick. So you shouldn't even try to expect it. But unfortunately, you do. And that gets you into trouble. And there you go. What are you supposed to do? Anyway, we'll watch these things as we go today. We got the market strengthening. We got the S&P uh, trading up around the um, 2774 level. Uh, we believe we're going to get to that 2800 level without too much trouble. That'll be up there. The old high we made just the other day was at 2778. I would not be surprised to take that out early in the morning, and then we'll see where we go from that level. But uh, we've we've been having some really big swings, which is what we really like to see. 877-927-6648. Hey folks, this is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank and get the type of interest they receive instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment can be anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000 per billable city lot. The interest paid is 7% per year, paid monthly. Depending on the investment, the income per month per lot ranged from $175 for a $30,000 investment to $437.50 for a $75,000 investment. If you are in the CD market, you want to look at this investment. St. Petersburg is located in Pinellas County, which is the densest county in Florida. If you're looking for an investment with your principal intact that pays a good interest rate, this may be for you. The supply is limited, so act now. For more information on these secured first mortgage opportunities, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 
800-529-9190. Jason Path has just launched his weekly newsletter, The Quantitative Edge, available only at TFNN.com. Right now, you can sign up for Jason's outstanding weekly report, including midweek updates whenever warranted, with a 30-day money-back guarantee included, so you have nothing to risk. Jason develops his trade recommendations by creating an ensemble of predictive and mathematical models trained on data by leveraging a variety of techniques, including market-based computer simulations. Jason then combines these sophisticated predictive and analytical models with deeply researched macro outlooks to identify opportunities in a number of different markets for traders to act on. Whether you're looking to trade futures, equities, commodities like crude oil and gold, forex, or cryptos, Jason covers it all. Sign up for Jason Paff's weekly trading newsletter right now by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find the quantitative edge under the newsletters tab. TFNN.com, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, brought to you by Nadex, next on TFNN. Okay, I'm back, folks, and I wanted to uh, post the chart of the New York Stock Exchange Index and compare it to the NASDAQ. You can see the damage that's been done on the, you know, on the bullish side. And what we're watching here is for a three- to five-day rally. That would take us into um, today, tomorrow, uh, maybe even as late as Thursday. Um, but we'll have to wait and see what's going to happen with that. We have some really strong volatility forecast between the 15th of October and all the way out into the the new moon that we get here on the uh, 24th of October. So we'll be, you know, watching that uh, uh, very, very closely, of course. Now, one of the things that Mark Douglas talked about were here is, uh, you know, about what prevents, you know, traders from acting properly. And they're basically the four fears the things that we do here at TFNN, looking at these patterns, those are, those are just nothing more than little technical triggers that try to tell you where your risk is that's, and the probability of success. That's really all it's about, whether you're looking at a Gartley or a butterfly, a three-drive pattern, a one three five, an ABCD. They're all based on probabilities. And you've got to remember that you have to get over the fear of being wrong because you're going to be wrong a lot. You got to kiss a lot of frogs before you find a princess, boys and girls. That's all there is to it. The second thing is, is you've got to get over the fear of losing money because that's part of breathing in our business. That's just as important as absolutely anything that we do. And the one that, that really hurts is the one, the fear of missing out because you'll get out of a trade like the like the coffee trades a perfect example you know you you buy it right and you had a nice move in it and you get out and it keeps going higher welcome to the people that bought it when i when we sold it folks that's that's basically the bottom line very seldom do you ever get the high or low tick so that answers your question about the fear of missing out that happens all the time and you have to get used to it if you had to equate this to playing golf, you know, you're going to have a lot of days where you're going to have some, you know, birdies and stuff like that. But there's going to be days where you're going to have a lot of bogeys. It's the same thing in trading. And then the one that is the that is the most talked about, of course, is the fear of leaving money on the table. And you're always going to do that because unless you get the higher low tick, you are going to leave money on the table. Bottom line, no, no other. And if you stop and think how silly that statement is 
In other words, if you're going to leave money on the table, the only way that you're not going to leave money on the table is if you get filled on the exact high or the exact low tick. That's that's what you have to be looking at. So keep in mind that these are the things that uh, you know are relatively uh, you know very very important as we as we go through and watch these things. So pay attention because those four fears are the ones you have to go through. And the only way you get over those is you have to set up a program that you, whether it's neurolinguistic programming using Tony Robbins or, you know, reading Mark Douglas's book, The Disciplined Trader, uh, and, you know, or any of the other books that are on psychology that are really good, working with Adrian Togare, whatever it happens to be, no matter whatever happens during that time, you're going to see a situation where you're going to have uh, – to face those four fears. And remember what uh, t Tony Robbins said about fear. The acronym for that is F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real, because 90%, 90 to 95% of all of our fears are never realized. And I think once people realize that, you know, that puts the odds in your favor. You have to trade, you have to treat trading like, that's why you have to treat trading like a game, actually, because, you know, you can sit there with paper money and you can uh, do it all day long and never have a loss. And you get into the market and you put your first trade on and boom, you're out in about five minutes. Well, <laughs> welcome to the real world, folks. You know, that's really what you're, what you're watching here. So keep in mind that these are the things that, that can be, you know, relatively important in your in your trading life, but the, those fears are the ones that you have to get over without, uh, you know, any trouble at all. That's uh, that's neither here nor there. So keep in mind that that's uh, very important, and that that goes down to your belief structure. You know, that's what you really need is you need that positive belief structure, and uh, the only way you can do that is to trade from a carefree state of mind. The only way you can trade from a carefree, carefree state of mind, if you're always there protecting yourself and worried about how much potential loss you have versus how much potential profit you have. The losses are going to occur. There's just, like we mentioned before, they're just like breathing. You're gonna happen, get used to them. But it's how you prepare yourself for those what's important because the only thing you can con control in the risk reward equation is the amount of risk that you're going to take. You never know how much profit you're going to make, even if you're gonna make any or not. So that's uh, that's basically, you know, some of the things that you, you want to keep a, uh, you know, that's what Mark always said, a trader has to be rigid and flexible at the same time. Well, you get that by experience, either by paper trading and, and also doing some live trading, but building a structure of belief in the system that you're dealing with. And that's the, the whole key is you have to believe in what you're what, what you're doing. And the only way to do that, my way is I, I believe in these patterns. I watch them you know, I watch them all the time. I mean, they don't always work. Nothing does, but the odds favor, you know, like uh, Louis Pasteur, the odds favor, uh, chance favors the prepared mind. And that's what you're doing when you're preparing pattern recognition trades is you're looking at these uh, markets to see that what is the best probability for something to happen over another. Just like when the grains were bottoming. Just look where the hogs were bottoming. We were buying, trying to buy hogs. We had Rich Anderson on the on the line telling us that you know these hogs were below the cost of production. He had been on here three years ago doing the same thing, and hogs rallied 23 cents. This time they rallied 15 cents. I mean, those that's a probability that you can, uh, you know, you can hang your hat on. Now you're not going to get the whole thing, but you're going to get a lot of it. And sometimes you're going to lose, but the odds will favor you if you if you have a probability that's based on a positive expectation. And that's what we're that's what we're all about here at TFN. And we're really lucky here because uh, you know we have so many people at TFNN that have some really good trading ideas. I mean, it's truly amazing what Tom O'Brien has done putting some of these folks together. My gosh, it's just, you got David White, Basil Chapman, Steve Rhodes, uh, Jason Paff. I mean, I'm sure I'm gonna forget somebody uh, along the way, but uh, along with Tommy O'Brien and Tom O'Brien and please the people at Thinkorswim, I mean, they got some great stuff, you know. Remember folks, when you're when you're trading and you're, and you're trying to do something, you have to be, uh, you know, have to have self-discipline. And, and a, a, a way to do that 
is to stay focused when the energy is, is really needs to be focused. Like if you've got a losing position on, that's what you've got to worry about. Don't worry about the profits. They'll take care of yourself. Worry about the losses because those are the ones that will get you into the trouble that you sometimes get into. And, uh, and we all get into them. So just focus on those losses and you'll be far better off than if you focus on the profits because – you don't know when the profits are coming. You know the loss is coming, but you don't know if the profits are coming. So, you know, pay attention to that. It's it's a very important concept, you know, to uh, to keep in mind. But be rigid in your rules and flexible in your observations. So that's it. Never let the market save you. You must save yourself. The words of Mark Douglas. Anyway, miss the guy. God bless him. Anyway, let's... Uh, Go, we got a break coming up here. Holy moly, guacamole, shut the front door and raise the rent. Let's see what's happened here. 877-927-6648. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HU, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend.